There are a lot of people who come to my channel who believe the only reason I live in Florida is because of girls in bikinis or girls in bathing suits at the beach. Well, I won't lie, it's part of the reason. It's absolutely a beautiful state to live in. The weather is really good even though it was only, oh, about 40 degrees this morning here in northern Florida. There are other reasons. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the primary reason that I live in the state of Florida, and it's going to surprise a lot of you. This is another reason. This is the town of St. Augustine. I used to live here. I live just south of here now. It is one of the most stunningly beautiful cities I have ever seen in my life. They decorate the city during the holidays with all of these LEDs, and it just gives the entire town this magical glow. It's the oldest continuously inhabited European settlement in the Americas. It's not the oldest city. It's the oldest continuously inhabited European settlement, going all the way back to the 1560s. The images are just something out of a dream, something out of the imagination of perhaps some online game. If you really want to see a look of wonder in a child's eyes, and I've even seen it on the faces of teenagers who have visited here for the first time, looking up with their mouths open, it is that beautiful. It is absolutely that beautiful. I still go down there, and its I've seen it more times than I can count, and I'm still impressed by it. But it is actually evidence of something. A deeper concept that these days is becoming more and more rare, but still exists in Florida. And it's the real reason I live here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are looking at this and going, wait, McKee, that's just a hotel. It's a nice hotel. Clearly, it's by the beach. But what does that have to do? Why would you live in Florida because of just some random hotel on the beach? Well, this isn't just any random hotel on the beach. This is the Embassy Suites in St. Augustine Beach. Now, many of you know, every single year, Florida is what they call a swing state because it's somewhat what they call purple. There's a large contingent of Democrats that live here. There's a large contingent of Republicans who live here. You will not find a greater example of people working together who come from different backgrounds and different belief systems than you will find in St. Augustine Beach. Now, here's the main city, St. Augustine up here. There's where all the pictures of the lights were. But just south is a place called St. Augustine Beach, pardon me. And it's a very interesting town. It's not the same as St. Augustine. It has its own mayor. It has its own police force. It's its own thing. But it's a fusion. It's a fusion of conservatives and liberals. Because there's something that both conservatives and liberals agree on. Everyone should have access to the beach. No one should have to pay to go enjoy the shore. Now, that hotel is right here. It's located between St. Augustine Beach Park, the actual beach park where you can go and you can just pull in for free, park your car, and you can walk right out to the beach. Won't cost you a dime. Go dive in the waves, get your feet wet, find a couple shells. Here's the hotel. Very expensive hotel, but right over here, on the other side of it, is a huge park. Huge, pristine park. Beautiful. As wild as it was 500 years ago. And there's no development allowed here of any kind. You see, this is that evil, terrible, horrible socialism confirmed. 
Because if it were a town run by all Republicans and people who were just interested in money, this would be solid hotels. All the way around here. You see, maintaining this park costs money. You have to pay people to do it. It's a drag on the tax revenue of the of the city, this little tiny city. So, in order to drive that tax revenue, you allow a big hotel like this to be built. People come, people stay, they pay their room fees. There is, of course, taxes assessed, and that finances everything else. So you have to create a marriage of the two concepts. Florida sees 60 million visitors from around the world every year. If it were nothing but businesses and nothing but republicanism, we wouldn't. The city in St. Augustine would not look like it does. There's no commercialism allowed in St. Augustine. You won't find a Dunkin' Donuts. You won't find a Starbucks. Not in Old Town. No way. On the outskirts, you might. But not in Old Town. And St. Augustine Beach, as you can see, is not a bunch of high-rises. This is by far, by far the biggest hotel in the whole town. Now, let's say it was busy here at St. Augustine Beach. That's no problem. You know what you can do? You can drive right down the road to Butler and take advantage of the public access. Once again, go out and just dive in the waves. Maybe even fish. If Butler's busy, you can go to Crescent. If Crescent's busy, you can drive down to the park at Marineland. And this is a state park. Right here, big parking area. A good portion of the park is actually across the street. But this is what happens in Florida. This is what happens in Florida. You have people that care about the environment. You have people that care about preserving things. And in the media, when you see them online, they're largely demonized. And they're largely made fun of as these radical, crazy liberals that are only talking about climate change. And you know, this area got hit by three hurricanes in five years. More than had hit this area in the previous 20. The reason this place is kept so clean and St. Augustine is one of the cleanest cities you will ever see. And it is a very liberal town. The entire town council, St. Augustine, St. Augustine Beach, all Democrats. Dolphins, by the hundreds, come into this inlet right here. Many people are familiar with this because there is the, uh, the star for it. Let me see if I can uh, find it here. Oh, it's right there. And you can go and you can drive over the bridge and you can look out here to the marina and you can see dolphins diving in and around and through the boats. It's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. But if business had their way, it wouldn't be. Volano Beach up here, this would all be built up. This would all be solid hotels. And there are a few hotels, of course. It's a not a one or the other thing. There are places to stay. There's a Hampton up here, I believe, and uh, a couple others. A lot of them are locally owned. They're not major chain hotels. But this is what makes Florida great. What makes Florida great is the compromise. The in-between place. Good people wanting to sit down together and work with each other. And recently, I have seen a dearth of that online. Either you're here or you're there. Either you're with them or you're with us. They're all evil. We're all good. That's not the case in Florida. And those of you who come and visit and vacation, you might not see it. It might not be apparent. But what makes it so enjoyable is that fusion that you can have this big, nice, beautiful, 
very corporatist hotel right in the middle of socialism. Big old park right here, free access to the beach here. It's funny, the businesses on the beach side of A1A have different regulations than the businesses on the inland side. Why? To protect the beach. To keep alcohol containers and parties and all this other, you know, that would go all night long and people that would trash the beach to keep that from happening. There are different regulations for businesses on the beach side than there are for businesses not on the beach side. And there's a good reason for it. It would seem like it would be unfair, but once again, the environment is something that both Republicans and Democrats agree on. That it is what makes Florida what it is. It is a wonderful place to live. Not just because it's sunny. Not just because there are girls in bikinis. And truly not just not because it's even beautiful like this. If you haven't visited St. Augustine, if you're a history buff, if you really want to st- understand the true history of North America, you have to visit this city. Because it will change your perspective on everything. Predates a city in the Americas that predates the pilgrims. Most of the pilgrims weren't even born when this was a city. Florida wasn't even part of the revolution. Those of you who are familiar with the world of Warcraft, walking through Old Town will remind you of Stormwind. I know a lot of you probably are totally lost at that, but inside the game of World of Warcraft, there's a city called Stormwind. And it's for the, uh, it's the Alliance home city. And it's got all the cobblestone streets on it. Got, got a very European feel to it, medieval feel to it. It is like a real life Stormwind. It's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. So, for those of you who think that this is the only reason, it's not. Is it a big reason? Sure. Absolutely. There's a nothing anti-biblical about pretty girls at the beach, regardless of what uh, people want to manipulate scriptures to be. And I've dealt with that in the comment section multiple times, and I'll deal with it again if anybody wants to. There's more of a prohibition against nice clothing, jewelry, makeup, and doing your hair than there is this. So, anyway, I will leave it there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.